It is very cold, but also very clear tonight. So the perfect conditions for astrophotography. So join me tonight from my garden in Sirencester while I photograph the Jellyfish Nebula. Okay, so like I said, tonight I'm photographing the Jellyfish Nebula and I'm really excited because I absolutely love this target. I have photographed it one time before, but that was with the larger Skywatcher 190 Maxitov Newtonian. So that has the focal length of a thousand millimeters. And when I shot it at that focal length, I really just zoned in right on the jellyfish and I missed out of a lot of the nebulosity that comes off that target. So I'm excited to shoot it again with the Ascar 400 to try and pick up some of that gas. Now this is in an absolutely fantastic location for me at the moment. It's in the constellation Gemini um, which should be up most of the night so it should be visible in about half an hour or so or when it gets dark enough to image and it should stay up most of the night until about 4 30 when it disappears behind the, the tree that you can see behind me. Um, so I should be able to get quite a few hours of data on this. I have captured some HA already. I did that last night um, and I think I got about four hours of data on that so tonight I'm going after the sulfur and the O3. I'm really excited as well because I've also got my um, 2600 mono back um, and this is the first time imaging with it since that oil leak so I'm really excited to get back into to mono imaging something that I absolutely love but the jellyfish itself is such a fantastic target it's a supernova remnant um, and it was caused by an exploding star about 3,000 to 30,000 years ago um, I'm sure you've all seen images of it but it just left this beautiful structure in the night sky um, and yeah I'm really excited to try and pull out some of that detail and present an image at the end of the video so just about to finish setting up now I need to polar align um, and then I should be good to start capturing some images Okay, so I had a couple of questions recently about how often I polar align, and the answer is that I do that every time I image. Um, and the main reason is because I'm on the tripod. So if I had an observatory or if I had a pier, I wouldn't polar align as much. But even though I was imaging last night and I left the mount out, um, I have been out um, and I have, you know, touched the mount. I've put the, tri uh, the telescope on. Um, my mount itself is on this tiny wooden plank, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit wobbly as well. So I do just check uh, polar alignment every night, and it really doesn't take that long with the ASI Air. Um, I started when I was uh, when I started talking, and it says it only took one second to plate solve. So all I need to do now is rotate the mount, which I'll do and you'll see it'll rotate the 60 degrees and then I'll just check polar alignment. It won't take very much to, uh, to tweak it and to, to set it right, but I always think it's worth doing before I image. So there you go, it's already plate solved. Um, so now all I do need to do is some minor adjustments. It's pretty close, but just a few, a few little tweaks should, uh, should make it more accurate. So there you go, I'm all done. The whole process took two minutes and seven seconds and so really not much of a hassle. And I always think it's worth checking polar alignment just to make sure you get the best possible data. Okay, so like I said, last night I managed to capture some HA data on this target and I was really happy with how it was looking. So this is a seven minute sub um, and you can see quite a lot of detail there in the jellyfish, but also some of the nebulosity over the other side coming off, which I didn't manage to capture last year. So what I'm gonna do to make sure that my frame is exactly right tonight, I'm just gonna plate solve off this image and that should line up perfectly. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long either. And there you go. Took about 10 seconds, plate solved the image and now it'll just go to that and it should line up perfectly. So this is that worst type of cloud, that really high altitude cloud, which you can't see with your eyes. So when you look up, you think it's clear, tricks you into thinking it's a good night, 
and then you put your camera up there and you pick up that cloud and you just can't image so um, when I said earlier it was the perfect night for astrophotography I was wrong okay so thankfully those forecasts were correct and all of that high altitude cloud has disappeared it is now a beautiful clear night with lots of stars visible it is very cold you can probably see my breath in front of the camera lens if I breathe out um, you can just uh, see just how cold it is and there's already a frost on the grass and it's only about 10 o'clock at night. There's frost on the camera and the mount at the moment as well but I'm hoping the dew heaters will, uh, will take care of that. So I've captured about 20 subs on the sulfur filter. I'm hoping to get to about 50 and then switch to the O3. So um, yeah, I'm just glad that high altitude cloud disappears. I'm going to let the, the, the telescope uh, collect data now all night and I'll show you what I got at the end of the video. Okay, so I managed to get two clear nights in a row and I managed to capture all of my data for this target and I've stacked these um, in APP but I haven't actually had a look at them yet. So this is the H a stack. Um, I'm hoping there'll be quite a lot of detail in here. Okay, yeah, so that's exactly the, the framing that I was after and this is what I was talking about earlier in the video when I said all of that nebulosity coming off the jellyfish um, and I'm really happy with that. This is about 5 hours 20 minutes worth of data um, and actually I think I made a bit of an error with this target. I think I've collected too much HA and not enough um, sulfur and uh, O3. Um, after going back through the uh, subs, the, the O3 session was, was hit by a few um, clouds so I had to bin a few of those those subs so um, I've got five hours 20 on the sulfur about three hours 45 on the O3 so let's take a look at this um, okay there's still a little bit of detail in there in the jellyfish not as much as I had had anticipated but I know oxygen's always uh, fainter anyway so this yeah like I said about three hours 45 on the O3. There is quite a bit of detail in here as well. I'm not sure whether you can see that on the screen. Um, okay, I'm, hopefully I can bring that out in processing. And then this is the sulfur. Um, so let's take a look at the sulfur. Okay, so some nice detail in the sulfur filter, um, especially in the, the actual jellyfish itself. This is um, about four hours, 20 minutes worth of uh, of, of data. This um, gradient I think is due to the moon. There was quite a bright moon um, when I was shooting I think in about 80% over the two nights. Um, so hopefully I can sort that out with some uh, background extraction. Um, but yeah I'll put together an image and I will show you that image now. So please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed the video please do hit that like button um, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.